Well, hello there, folks. It's Alex posting on a sort of slightly stormy Saturday night, actually. It's a bit windy and a bit rainy. Now, this girl I met just a couple of, well, probably more three or four weeks ago, actually, in Cafe Nero. We were, well, I was just working. It's where I go to work now, and I find a lot of the times I pick up girls in a cafe environment. So it actually works very well, it feels very natural. Uh, I do, however, need to make sure that I try and sexualize the conversations, and that's the, that's the problematic part of coffee shop approaches, is that, you know, kind of more natural approaches, which I think is ultimately the best way of approaching girls in the daytime. And I do need to remember to actually sort of spice it up and to inject a little bit of attraction in there and tell her that she's attractive. So, and particularly true of this one girl, because she is a student, she is Ukrainian, she's here for f five years doing a degree, and she is a little bit of an intellectual. Uh, she was quite attractive and bubbly. I quite actually, I learned subsequently that she is a dancer or used to be a dancer. She's got a nice figure, something that attracts me more to a girl actually than a pretty face. I then took a number and then I left it and I texted her but she ignored my text. So I just kind of threw, threw the number away metaphorically. However, this is the interesting part, is that I then found myself in the coffee shop packing up to go and this girl, I saw this face smiling at me through the railings as I go down the staircase and I was like, uh, hi. <laughs> Quickly figuring out this is a girl I've approached once upon a time. So I scuttled back up the staircase and said, hey, how's it going, as you do. Uh, honesty is completely overrated in social situations. <laughs> I hate to say it. It's good in a book, but in a social, socially dynamic situation, it ain't any good. You don't have to deliver the, tr the, the full truth there and then. So we bantered. Um, uh, I said, you've probably got my name, she, she had, and we mentioned names and, and then we agreed to hook up. And she told me she had simply lost her phone. Now that must be true because we then bantered on texts and eventually, uh, quite quickly actually, I got her out on a date. What I like to do now is I go to a place which is indoors, but if it's really nice weather, I meet the girl outside the bar and take her to another venue which is just 20 yards away and the beauty of it is it's outside so if it's a hot day it's perfect and it's got one side there's a, a sort of a long cushioned seat and then you sit on a chair so it allows me during the course of the afternoon to move round and sit next to the girl now I'll just uh, digress momentarily to a dude that I've been listening to called Black Dragon he comes across as kind of like a businessman is in his 40s I think and he you know he's, he's witty but confident and he's more my vibe because he's not just about fucking girls it's about having girls in his life perhaps a number of girls in his life and one of the things that he says is you've got to get tactile and I know it's hard and going out on the date particularly because she was a younger girl an intellectual studenty girl slightly nervous but clearly wanting to meet I could see that it was going to be perhaps a little bit of a challenge uh, and you know the critical thing was to plough through that and to make a physical, sexual, you know, intimate connection. This guy's quite interesting. He also recommends that you don't kiss a girl and don't try and kiss a girl on the first date. You do all of that and physically escalate to the bedroom on the second date. And he keeps his dates very short. I think that's another good tip for the older dudes out there because long three or four hour, five hour dates where you're trying to escalate sexually on a girl you know, in a way, it's a duplicate of what we do as day gamers, where we we create a false time lapse by changing location. So a girl needs to be comfortable in your company. It's an option I'm actually going to try out. Keeping the date super short, I mean, he says an hour. Definitely being physical on the dates, caressing her hair, holding her hands, putting your hand on her leg when you talk, but then actually pushing away a bit saying right love I'm off to my meet next meeting so I did all of these things with this girl and it, it is always a little bit like pushing a rock uphill the conversation at first was slightly intellectual she uh, I, the usual questions what are your guilty pleasures 
um, what sort of men do you like, tell me a little bit about your boyfriend, history, um, trying to gravitate the conversation towards the sort of sexual rather than a social arena. That was all a bit tricky because she um, was a little bit very polite, very, she was kind of confident, but she was, um, oh, um, uh, well, I had a, a thing with a, a, a kind of this weird American guy, a weird, weird thing with this American guy. I'm like, well, tell me more. And she's like, no, 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 no. Eventually, I kind of got there. But what really did help was when I got physical. And I actually took her hand when we first met outside the cinema as a meeting point. Um, and so, and she actually took it for a while. She was quite kind of surprised that I'd actually taken her hand. And now on the date itself, I also took her hands uh, a couple of times. And then, and then one particular occasion, I went round to her side of the table and I left my hand on her leg for some time. I didn't play with her. Oh, I did. Right at the end, I played with her hair because it looked nice when it was up. And I also um, put my hand on her back quite a lot. But it was ultimately, I'm afraid, a kind of a, uh, an unsuccessful in inverted commas date because she's getting she had another meeting with a friend at five o'clock she's packing she gets on a bus to ukraine early tomorrow morning and she has like a 28 hour bus drive now maybe she was interested um in going further but i i said look drink up let's go to another bar i, cr I know that does craft beer around the corner which is near my flat but she wasn't up for it she had to go and her friend had been texting so there you go i lost the fish <laughs> okay she's now off to the ukraine uh, and I probably won't ever see her again because she's away for the summer and I think what was interesting about it was I, I always find it a little bit of a challenge I just think this is normal and natural uh, I find the, the, the nervousness quite a challenge to have to get through to plow on through and if you were to ask me you know what was the kind of the one thing that I would take away from this whole uh, date I think it would be uh, something that, again, to come back to this Black Dragon guy, kind of resonates with me quite strongly. And it's about being relaxed. Now, he talks about non-reactivity and just being relaxed and leaning back, kind of looking away and, um, you know, not getting, getting on a big speech about your own life. The other thing I did is I, I spiked up the conversation by getting her to stand up and do a twirl for me because she told me that she'd done some dancing when she was younger. Again, that helped sexualize the interaction. At that point, I probably could have sat down next to her, actually. Um, and, and so um, this relaxation is really important. And I think it's just, I mean, the, one of the advantages of the 52 First Dates project is that, you know, just to go on so many fucking dates, that eventually it becomes like normal. And it's a little bit like a mirror of, of approaching girls during the daytime. Once you do it enough, you just get more relaxed, more confident. You follow a routine and a drill, which just takes your monkey mind away. And just to, you just follow a routine, try not to be clever. Uh, um, but just sort of give myself, in a way, the maximum opportunity by using the, the what's the word, the scaffolding and the props of the training wheels of these tricks and techniques and lines. Yeah, lines are great, you know. Structures, if you like, to be able to relax and to perform. And it really is important to keep things sexual, to get things on that level. Uh, because otherwise you're just going to drift into the most horrible and painful and corrosive friend zone ter territory. All right, guys, thanks for tuning in. Um, I don't think there'll be a, a sequel to this, but uh, as, as always, the critical thing is to learn from the experience. And, and I think one final thought is that she, I think she was interested but nervous, there was an age gap, and she hadn't had much action in her life, I don't think. And that's why I, find it, I found it quite difficult to, to navigate the conversation onto sort of sexual topics or, you know, sexual innuendo. Okay, look forward to vlogging you in the very near future. Strap on your balls, go out there, get some fucking dates, you bastards.